Decades of proven results show that metam sodium is a reliable tool for suppressing weeds, diseases, and nematodes. But recent research from Novasource reveals surprising new findings that are helping applicators gain a greater understanding of how to enhance the performance of this reliable product. Metam is an older product and it seems like we should know a lot about it and there's some real interesting stuff that we're finding out lately that's kind of debunking some stuff that we, we thought before about how the movement is going and what moisture does with the movement and how important placement is in the ground. In fact, results from more than 15,000 soil measurements taken over more than two years by Novasource show that applicators can match metam sodium to the pest in more targeted and efficient ways through a greater understanding of the product and the properties of the soil where it is being applied. For many years, a common assumption has been that all fumigants behave the same way upon application. Many applicators have thought that metam sodium acted as a typical fumigant by moving widely and deeply throughout the soil profile. But it's not true. A primary insight in our findings is that precision placement is key because metam sodium lacks mobility in the soil because of its low vapor pressure. Novasource has found the key factors for increasing metam sodium mobility, soil preparation, soil moisture, and application technique to ensure precision placement. So what we've learned probably the most is it doesn't move in the soil like other fumigants. Therefore, you have to place it exactly where you want it. And also, uh, soil moisture is a huge factor in it. If the moisture is not there to carry the product, it doesn't move. If it doesn't move, it doesn't contact the pest that you're after or the pathogen. Therefore, it doesn't do its job. Product placement and moisture. Let's take a closer look. For years, growers simply chemigated or shanked metam sodium thinking the product would move throughout the entire soil profile. But our field studies show that vertical and lateral movement is not happening in the ways that many growers have often assumed. In fact, when chemigated, metam sodium is found primarily in the top four inches of soil. In order to perform at peak effectiveness, metam sodium needs to come in contact with the pest it's controlling. Different pests are found at different depths, that's why it's important to understand application techniques that enhance its proximity to a pest. The good news from our chemigation studies is that now we know the importance of moisture. Metam sodium moves farther in soil that is already pre-irrigated. To make sure that metam sodium moves and to get it closer to the pest, you want to properly prepare your soil in advance of application. Is it, needs, it needs a vehicle to get where it's going and it needs an easy path. Uh, so soil tilth and moisture, really important. So the way you, you prepare your ground, um, it has a lot to do with it. And then get the, get the product where you want it to work. When preparing the soil, proper moisture content is essential. Ideally, you want to achieve up to 80% soil moisture throughout the targeted soil profile and maintain that moisture level for up to 30 days in advance of the day you apply the product if possible. This is critical to prevent surface drying. You know, we've worked closely with our custom applicator over the last year or so, and we've really uh, focused quite heavily on pre-application soil moisture and tillage, and we've found out it's, a, it's extremely important to have good soil moisture and good tillage before we start. I think that moisture deal is, is really paying a bigger part than what we thought it was. Significantly bigger. In field tests, results have shown the difference. Average readings at 80% moisture were higher than in 50% soil moisture. Further evidence that the use label provides excellent guidance for both maximizing results and for adhering to excellent stewardship standards. Another way to visualize soil preparation is simply to create ideal planting conditions. Good soil tilth also plays an important role in metam movement. Dry, cloddy, and compacted soil will not produce the same results as those obtained from a well-prepared soil. Regardless of the depth of shank application, mobility is always better in non-compacted soil with proper moisture content. It's important to note that this level of soil preparation also has other benefits. 
Moisture in the soil activates respiration, and respiring pests are easier to control, according to Dr. Stephen Fenimore, a weed scientist at the University of California, Davis. The findings in our studies have validated that the ideal conditions for planting are often the best conditions for fumigating. The other prime factor in maximizing the effectiveness of metamsodium is the application technique you choose for correct placement near the weed seed, disease, or nematode. I can't impress upon anybody enough that placement is everything. Placement and moisture, it's just that simple. Soil moisture is the number two most important component of METAM applications. Um, the most important application is placement, but a very close, close second is moisture. Without moisture, it will not work. So what I've learned about the lateral and vertical placement of METAM is that just because we've got a nozzle mounted behind a duck foot doesn't necessarily mean we're getting tip to tip on the sweep. And as an applicator, it's, it's something that we need to be aware of and it's something that we need to work on. I think the more injection points you can have, the better off you'll be. For example, our field studies show that shank-injected metam sodium generally moves up to six inches above and as many as six inches below the injection point in properly prepared soil. Armed with that information, you'll know exactly where to place your metam sodium to be most effective. In some cases, additional vertical coverage is desired to reach targeted pests. Some growers are making labeled applications at two levels simultaneously. That'd be my recommendation for you is to try to apply it at more than one level. Really, really good. The results we've seen by adjusting our application levels by putting some at the, near the surface of soil and some in a deep application have been in controlling diseases and nematodes at multiple levels. Every application situation is unique. A number of factors determine your particular approach, including your upcoming crop, soil conditions, equipment, and the specific pest you're targeting. But we found that no matter where you're using metam sodium or metam potassium, certain procedures and principles for maximizing its effectiveness always apply. To summarize, when you know your target pest and its depth in the soil, the most effective use of this proven fumigant is driven by three things. Prepare the soil the same way you'd create ideal growing conditions, by making sure it's mixed, mellow, and non-compacted. Moisten the soil for up to 30 days. Remember, you're conditioning both the soil and the pest to maximize efficacy. Place the product exactly where you need it to work by using the most effective application technique. And always be a good steward of this product. Use it according to label directions, following all labeled requirements and restrictions. Do not leave any metam sodium on the soil surface to prevent waste and any potential to create odor or off-gassing issues. Following good stewardship practices can enhance efficiency, efficacy, and return on investment. We decided that we would go the extra effort and take the time, try to get our moisture content in that 65 to 70, 75% range for control. And the way our operation works, it creates quite a bit of extra effort, you know, work, labor involved. But the results we've been seeing, we feel greatly outweigh what you would normally do if you would just work your grain stubble normal and apply it in a drier soil type. I fought nut sedge ever since I came back from college in 1972. And we had, we had minor problems with it then, but it, it was just continually getting worse because we did nothing for control. And so finally in the 80s, we started using different chemicals and, and we have used different chemicals for the last, what, 40, 45 years and nothing has seemed to work. Three years ago, we started using METAM uh, and putting it in in the fall, and it, it has visibly helped our crops. I, I look back at different yields. Uh, we have jumped our yields two to 350 hundredweight per acre 
in those same fields that we put the metam on versus what we were the controls we were trying to use previous to that. Metam sodium is a pretty interesting product, you know, that's been used for a number of years and very successful using it. I think it's kind of neat that we can take a product like that that we seemingly know a lot about and find new little nuances to it that hopefully we can get better performance out of. So I'm encouraged about the future of Metam. You really can increase your return on your investment in Metam sodium by using these research insights to match product to pest more effectively. To learn more, visit novasource.com.